everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields. Today, I have a little somber news. My fermentation chamber has officially bit the dust and chilled her last beer. So with that, rest in peace, fermentation chamber, rest in peace. But on a good note, that means we get to build a new one and I'm gonna show you how to make a fermentation chamber. Stay tuned. All right, we got this thing unpacked. And I just wanna let everybody know, you do not need to buy a new chest freezer or even a, a upright freezer or whatever you wanna use. If you find one on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or your mom's old, old garage, that's totally fine. As long as it works, you can use it. I just happened to get this small, cheap one on sale today. And so I decided just to pick it up, uh, make sure that it lasts me a good long time. But any freezer that runs and the pressure's still good, should be just fine, especially if you're only gonna be using it for brewing because you're not gonna use it all that much. But I would suggest leaving it running, even if it's at a, a medium temperature, just to keep the compressor kicking on every once in a while so it doesn't dry out the O-rings and things inside of your compressor. So with that started, first things first, plug it in, make sure it cools down, especially if you got a used one. All right, now that you know the that your freezer is working, I'm gonna go through a few things that you're gonna to need to set up your fermentation chamber. There's really only two things that you're gonna need right off the bat, and really only one thing if you wanna get started early. The most important thing is this device right here, a temperature controller. And I use an Inkbird temperature controller, kinda of looks like this one here. It has a plug for both cooling and heating. So that's important because sometimes you're gonna be doing this in summer months, Sometimes you might be doing this in the cooler months in your garage, and you're gonna need a way for your refrigerator to cool the beer down, and a heat source for warming the beer up. This is also important if you're trying to raise the temperature. For instance, if you're doing a lager and you need to do a diacetyl rest, and you need to raise the temperature up of your beer, and then uh, lower it back down. You're gonna need a, a way to keep it warm and a way to keep it cool. One thing that I use, is this lamp with a ceramic lizard lamp uh, bulb inside of it. I'll have links down in the video description on where to purchase these things. It's pretty inexpensive. It has a switch right here on and off. So if you if you have it plugged in and you, and you still want this thing to not turn on, uh, maybe during some of the summer months or something like that where you're not worried about it uh, getting a little too cool and you'd rather it just uh, not, not kick on the heat lamp, um, you can actually turn this switch on and off. All right, let's go through real quickly how to set this thing up. Um, I have my chest freezer plugged into the temperature controller right here on the wall. That's in the cooling plug, of course. And then I'm gonna open up the chest freezer. I'm gonna take this probe here that comes from the ink bird. I'm gonna put it through the back here. This way I don't have to drill through anything and it'll still keep the uh, seal pretty tight. And so, and then the same thing with this lizard lamp. I'm gonna take this here, I'm gonna put it through the crack, if I can here. Might have to slightly close it or put it on the edge. In this case, this lid might be a little tight, so I might have to put it over here on this edge, and that's okay. And then I'm gonna put this inside, and I'm actually gonna set it on top of the compressor plate here. I'll kind of show you what that looks like. I'm gonna set that just like that inside on the compressor little shelf there. And then my beer is gonna sit in the voided area there when I am fermenting it. And then I'm gonna tuck that temperature probe into the harness on my fermenter. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. All right, here's what that looks like all heat, um, set up. I actually have my glass carboy in there. You're gonna wanna measure your fermenter before you buy a chest freezer. In this case, I have just a smidge of room on either side so it's not touching any of the sides of the wall. And that's that's good because then it won't freeze or get too cold and or have hot or cold spots in the beer. 
It's not gonna get freezing temperatures or anything in here while I'm just fermenting at 60s or something like that. But as I do cold crash, it will get cold in certain areas. And although we're not gonna get cold enough to freeze the beer because there's alcohol present, you really don't wanna be touching the sides of the fermentation chamber. So where I tuck that temperature probe is right here in between the harness and where the level of the beer is. So you wanna make sure it's at least below where your beer or wort is on your fermenter. And then I put that lizard lamp facing away from the beer. So the heat will get in there, but it's not directing the heat directly towards the beer in any way. And then those run out the back. So then I can close the lid. That should stay pretty sealed. And then I can set my ink bird to, you know, whichever degree that I want it to. In this case right now, the top number is the temperature of the beer at 64 and the, uh, bottom temperature because I'm going to be cold crashing this I've set to about 35 degrees and so I'm actually going to be using a cold crash guardian and there's a video in my link description on how to do that for cold crashing a beer without getting oxidation uh, and suck back and so you can watch that video I'll put that link in the description below. You're also going to want to have a dehumidifier of some kind inside of your fermentation chamber. I use this Evadry 500. It's a high capacity reusable dehumidifier. And what happens basically is when the uh, when it gets in there, it helps suck up all the moisture out of the air. And then you, when you get done, you can plug it in with the thing on the bottom here into the wall or an outlet. It dries all the beads back out and you can use it over and over. And so um, this is a way to keep your fermentation chamber dry so it's not dripping inside and helps preventing molding and other things like that. All right, and just like that, in about five minutes flat, you have yourself a fermentation chamber. So go ahead, check the link below for all of the equipment that you might need, including the ink bird, the lizard lamp, and the ceramic bulb that I used in this video. I'll put those links right down in the video description for you. Also, if you have questions, again, leave them in the comments. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share my videos. Helps me get them out to you faster. With that, cheers, and raise a glass to the old fermenter. She did good. I'm looking forward to do plenty more beers in the new one. Happy brewing.